Hi friends, today I'm going to cover Azure Architecture Load Balancer Strategy. I'm just taking another example how to write any architecture in your real time. Before we dive into our today's topic, I just want to give you a quick glance on our channel, uh, the Cloud Academy uh, all-in-one. So in this one, you can find the various uh, series like Azure Migration, Azure Real-Time Interview Questions, uh, also the cloud architecture related uh, videos mainly you can focus on the real-time interview questions and real-time scenarios as well and I'm also covering few videos for the beginners so uh, I'm trying to bring the layman examples or basic examples to make them understand especially for the beginners and uh, freshers the other side I also placed a few videos for the AWS, AWS real-time interview questions, uh, real-time interview scenarios or real-time scenarios. Uh, I'm also covering how to create uh, the various resources of AWS and Azure in simple steps. So it's worth watching. Please give it a try. Let us get into our today's topic. Load balancer strategy is just one piece in complete enterprise. So you may have 100 or 150 different pieces within your enterprise strategy so your application firewalls web application firewalls firewalls load balancers uh, security related uh, stuff resources resource groups everything will fall into a different type of strategy so in this particular scenario we have to design an architecture for the load balancer it's just not for one particular requirement. Assume that your organization have 100 different application stream. Each application team has their own application requirement and they're deploying the applications across the regions. So few applications could be just regional and few applications could be cross regional. That means that application is going to be supported for multiple countries. And uh, you also need to deploy your applications in the multiple uh, Azure regions. So you have to consider all different type of requirements by assuming that the various application teams have different requirements. So if you are, if you know the application architecture, you can simply define what is your load balancer. But here you are trying to fulfill the complete requirements which are anticipated from the various teams across the global. Okay, so whatever the strategy you define will be followed by any other applications teams to define or to deploy their applications and they will just configure the load balancer based on the instructions or the strategy you define. So you have to think that level, just not like one application and for one application you can just understand the requirement, evaluate everything and then you can simply configure the load balancer based on that requirement. But here the challenging part is like you have to evaluate or anticipate what the future requirement of the applications team based on that you need to create let us jump into so i was speaking a lot about the architecture pillars in many of my slide decks so uh, i don't need to repeat that but uh, operational excellence security reliability performance efficiency and cost optimization are the five architecture pillars at the same time uh, I was speaking a lot on design architecture and consideration in my previous video. Please go through my architectural videos, then you will understand uh, all this. Monitoring, logging, security. These are the simple terms to understand, but these are the few architectural considerations which you need to uh, consider while you are designing any architecture. Uh, you may ask me like why I need logging. So logging is very, very critical piece for any type of architecture while you're considering okay where it is getting failed and stuff but probably in the load balancer it may be required or it may not be required but you need to have these considerations you need to validate whether this is really required for this requirement if it is not required you can just uh, simply move out of that so moving on uh, load balancer strategy this is our main topic i'm not really going in detail what the uh, what kind of uh, evaluation or what kind of tools we considered and all those but i'm just trying to land at the conclusion so uh, at a nutshell you can say your application could be web application or it is a internet facing application or globally deployed in multi-regions 
So for all these type of applications, you need to support the load balancer. If it is locally uh, available, then your strategy is going to be simply application gateway, internet facing application, and it is just mm, not really what to go with the global regions then you can simply configure the application gateway and then you can redirect to the uh, application but if it is your internet facing application with the HTTPS and it is globally deployed in multiple regions then we need to have a traffic manager this chart is made to understand sim simple things um, even to the application teams they can decide okay my application is uh, http and https and uh, at the same time it, it has to be available in the multiple regions then what need to be done then i need to configure the traffic manager so then on below the traffic manager the application gateway will come into the picture but if it is not internet facing application you can simply pull the azure load balancer and for various reasons you can also consider the friend door uh, for that also we it is defined like which conditions internet facing applications globally deployed in multiple regions and you require the SSL offload then you can consider application friend door plus application gateway so this this chart will help you or up, will help application streams to decide which load balancer need to be configured for their application requirement our application deployment so uh, this is one thing we created for that particular uh, strategy and at the same time i'm giving you a few examples i'm not really pulling out uh, from my real time uh, because it's not uh, uh, good to copy so i'm just giving you the general examples for from uh, friend door and the traffic manager point of view so when you decide you have to go with the friend door based on the previous slide conditions then this is how the architecture works so your dns routes uh, to the friend door and friend door will route to the application gateway so there are two application gateway gateways again so it will redirect the traffic to the application gateway and the, within the application gateway then it it will go to the appropriate load balancer and vms so this is the failover mechanism you you are actually configuring in the multiple regions so that you your failover mechanism will work uh, that means if the first reason is uh, down then automatically second reason will be uh, taking the load the other example i'm taking here is a traffic manager so traffic manager also can be considered in the few cases as i mentioned if it is internet uh, facing application it is globally deployed in multiple regions you can take a uh, traffic manager plus load balancer here so for that i'm taking the example here uh, uh, example architecture so if your web application will go through the traffic manager and within the traffic manager it will redirect to the web applications right it's a simple architecture but if you want to go with the more complex uh, architecture here it is with load balancer with the traffic manager so the traffic manager will hit the load balancers here there are two load balancers configured and uh, there are plenty of uh, web tiers which are on, on, on the vms then it can redirect first traffic manager I will receive the request from the internet whichever is a, a region primary region it will send and whenever the whenever it is busy it will send to the secondary region so within that also we have configured the load balancer we have plenty of vms available within the web tier so this load balancer will decide uh, this particular request has to go with to which vm so uh, based on that again uh, this vms will receive the request and uh, it will pass the request to the business tier within the business tier also we have multiple vms so that's the reason you know we have multiple load balancers to manage the traffic within the sql server also we have always on and then the data is being replicated so again there is one more load balancer and it will just manage so there are, it's just to make the application highly available that is the reason we have multiple replicas and at the same time load balancers configured in each level so that the performance of your application and the request response will be much better and at the same time we have the failovers like if the application of uh, one reason fa is failed then second reason automatically will be available for the uh, for serving the request so I explained in the previous slide like uh, when to use and you should know little bit about that when you're uh, making your strategy right 
So let me just explain you what is a major difference between the traffic manager and friend door. So Azure friend door provides faster failover support as it is a reverse proxy whereas uh, Azure traffic manager is a DNS lookup. Uh, the other bigger one is like uh, if you have uh, four different uh, regions and uh, your friend door is uh, fronting to your traffic, it will take the closest failover region rather than uh, just which are configured earlier. So it has some kind of uh, artificial intelligence or intelligence mechanism which can take it to the closest region. Uh, it also has a SSL offloading. Uh, and uh, but still provides the end-to-end -end encryption but uh, no SSL offloading in the traffic manager so SSL offloading is different topic again uh, you should little uh, bit understand of that uh, I, I can come back with that terminology later uh, then uh, it can also uh, you it also uses any cached and split TCP for better network performance whereas traffic uh, manager doesn't uh, these are just few differences and uh, based on your complete list of the requirements you can make a decision uh, which could be better I'm not uh, giving you which is good or which is bad you based on the situation or based on the requirement you can decide uh, or you, you can see if uh, has more uh, potential for that particular requirement or traffic manager has more potential for that requirement. There's a reason. Here we are making a strategy based on the various requirements. Application teams will choose but we are giving them when to choose and when not to choose. What to choose or what not to choose for that particular requirement, right? So it's a uh, huge document. We even create a, a required DevOps uh, DevOps and ARM templates so that they can just simply trigger whenever they have a requirement. They don't need to even worry much about it. So co coming to the load balancer various options. Uh, these are the various options I was just listing down in the fourth slide. Uh, Azure friend door, uh, traffic manager I already mentioned and Azure load balancer is a uh, layer 4 whereas application gateway is a layer 7. When I say layer 7 it is a HTTP and HTTPS whereas layer 4, layer 3 is a TCP IP. So Azure load balancer usually work with the uh, layer 4 or layer 7 whereas application gateway works in the HTTP, HTTPS which is a layer 7. So these are this is how we can uh, understand and uh, how we define the load balance st strategy uh, like you know th uh, one month work I just um, uh, simply mentioned within few slides I, I may not be covering so detail but I'm just trying to give you the high level information uh, for load balancer strategy in the similar way you can just take one of the service and just try to make the strategy for any of the service by considering that you are providing this particular strategy for uh, maybe 40 or 50 different applications teams. So that's how you can deep dive into any uh, application services or Azure services or AWS services. Thanks for watching my videos. Uh, please subscribe my channel.